Hello everybody and welcome to our demonstration. Our demonstration is today about C-Engineer as solution for concrete bridges. My name is Chef Bayens and I'm support engineer at the headquarters of SIA in Belgium. Today I will explain you a bit more about these different topics. So I will talk a bit about variable traffic loads, mobile loads, combination of loads, also known as bridge combinations, about pretensioning, construction stages, and also possible checks that you can do according to Eurocode 2, the part about bridges. So, let's begin. The first part is about variable traffic loads. So, this goes about mobile loads and train loads. Now, mobile loads and train loads are two different things in SIA. Mobile loads is the first thing. That's for 1D members and it's, it generates influence lines for a unit load that moves over a certain truck. Then, by, that, by using that influence line, you can find the most negative position for the, the mobile load. And then it's possible to create the load, to generate the load on that most negative position. That is what you can do with mobile loads. The procedure, first you must have a track, so you must define where the load must, must go over. Next, you must define this, this unit load, so it can be one load, but it can also be multiple loads. And this unit load will then be multiplied with a load system. Then you will have to do the linear calculation, so it can generate these influence lines to search for that most negative, those, that critical position. And our goal is to find, find the position of the load system. So, for example, we do a calculation and you can find that the maximal moments can be introduced by placing our variable loads at 22 meters. For example. Or we can do, um, we can also ask him for the envelope and the, the envelope that will give us the envelope of all the different positions and it will give you all the maximal moments that can be created by all the different positions that that mobile load can take. The same thing for the minimal moments. Then there's the other thing, train loads. Train loads works a bit differently. It's a bit more simple. It's in fact, you are going to define, again, a mobile uh, a track. You can, um, on that track, you're going to put a unit load. And that unit load gets multiplied by um, a load pattern that can be loaded from the library. And that load pattern is going to be placed on that track, on that route, and it can be placed over each, over uh, with, with a certain step in between, so each meter, and it will create multiple load cases. For example, load case 1, where the mobile load is at 1 meter. Load case 2, where the mobile load is at 2 meters. Load case 3, with the mobile load at 3 meters. Like that. So it just creates load cases with the loads generated in it. As you can see here in the figure, um, there will be a, a load generated and you can see in the figure that the load is generated on this position. Now to generate the load case cases, the load cases are generated automatically so you do not have to do something for this and the results they are stored in individual load cases so in fact those results are loads that are generated. So it just creates itself, for itself, load cases and puts the load into those load cases. And that's what you can see here in this window for um, our 
lane load manager, we're going to say for a certain, at a certain time, generate loads, and then it will generate those load cases with different loads. And the different loads can be seen, like indicated in this figure. And the load cases, they're generated automatically, and also all the loads are also generated automatically. You can also say that the, the generated load can be placed on multiple um, plates at the same time, or just the one where the track moves over. So you have some possibility in it to define whether or not it moves just on, on one position or multiple. Now, to show you how it works in detail, I will just create this example, and then you can see how it works. So I go back to see an engineer, and I'm going to my first project. So this is an empty project, because in this project I'm going to show you how you build the project, and I'm going to generate loads. So in fact, we're going to build a certain type of bridge. And this, this bridge, this has a length of 30 meters, and in fact, it's not completely straight. So actually, to keep, to, to, to uh, indicate it very simple, we're just going to create this curved bridge. Exactly this one. Okay, let's start. We know, actually, we know the bridge on three positions. The beginning position, the middle position, and at the end position. So I'm going to use coordinates to input this part. So I'm going to start. The lower plate has a thickness of 150 millimeters. There we go. We start with a circle arc. New circular arc. Start point is 0, minus 2, 0. That means x coordinate is 0, y coordinate, etc. The intermediate point, that's in the middle of the bridge, this is at 30, so in fact the bridge is 60 meters long. And the end point is 60 minus 2, 0 again. And then it automatically goes back to a straight line. That's on 60 to 0. And we're going to go back again with a circular arc, and the intermediate point is 37, 0. So in fact the bridge is 5 meters wide, 60 meters long, and the curvature, uh, you have a difference of 5 meters between the beginning and the end. It's Sorry, it's 4 meters. Okay, doesn't matter really. And then uh, the end point of the circular arc is 0 to 2, 0. Okay, so I've just used coordinates, but you, you would also be able to click. This is the, the bottom part. Now I'm going to put some walls on it. Let's say these walls they are also 150 millimeters thick. And they are 3 meters high, so I'm going to change to 3. And uh, let's say select line. Voila. There we go. And now I'm going to select these nodes. This one. That one. And that one. And I want to move them half a meter to the left. So I'm going to say move. And I'll say, um, well, wait a minute, this is in the y direction. So let's start at the point 0, 0. And I want you to move half a meter to the left. It means to the negative side of the y-axis, that's 0 and then minus 0 0.5. And you can see it's now a bit, bit inclined. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the other part. Select the three top nodes. And I'm going to do the same thing. Move. But now it's going to the positive direction. 0 and 0 0.5. There we go. And 
And then for the top part, I'm going to input everything now again with coordinates. I choose again a plate, 150 millimeters, that's okay. Let's start with the circular arc. Here we go. The first point is 0, minus 5, 3. You can see here the point. The second point is 30, 0, 3. And then we have 60, minus 5, 3. The automatic C goes back to a straight line after we have inputted the arc. And that's OK. So I'll go to 60, 5, 3 for the next point. And then again, my circular arc. And it immediately asks for the intermediate point. The intermediate point is 30, 10, 3. And the last point we need is 0, 5, 3. There we go. Now we have our structure. And of course, when the structure is created, now it is created. After it is created, you have to do the different checks. And the different checks, they are connect members and nodes. So why do I have to do this? To connect the plate with the wall. I mean this part. You have to connect it. And check structure data to see if no mistakes were made. So that's good. And then we need a support. And the support is a line on 2D member edge, for example. Let's say we take a hinge for this side, for example. And then for the other side, we take something, for example, a sliding uh, support. So you see the supports are now very little. If I want to make them bigger, that's possible by using a multiplier. So that was the structure. Now for the next part, we will input the loads. So let's go to the loads. So I'm going to close the structure menu, and I'm going to go to load. So I do not have any load cases yet. That's why it goes to this menu. So let's say load case 1 was self-weight. Let's not do anything with it. And then for the next one, let's make it, uh, for example, this can be a single traffic load. I'll explain that first. It should be a variable load, not a permanent one. There we go. Close. So when we come to the uh, traffic loads, um, in fact, you have to be here under traffic loads. You have single traffic load, traffic lane, and then there will also be the manager which is available once you have a traffic lane. Okay, um, to work a bit easier I'm gonna change the user coordinate system and I'm gonna change it, set the new origin to uh, 003, so 3 meters higher. There we go. You see it's now in the plane of the top plate. Okay, if you want to do a single traffic load well, in fact, um, this is what you will always get to indicate a load pattern. This is uh, the option here is to make it yourself. So, in fact, you have to input certain certain points, certain loads. Now, I'm going to close that because we have a library which you can use. I'm just going to copy the first one, and you can see this is a load pattern that I also would have been able to create myself, but if something is already created, then I don't have to lose any time with it myself. And then, at the next part, when I would close this option, then, in fact, I can place this load somewhere on my bridge. That is, if you would do a single traffic load. Now, that's not really what we're going what we, we, we want to achieve, because we want to achieve at different positions. We want him to generate load cases and loads himself. So that was the, the easy option, and we're not going to use that. We're going we're gonna to look at multiple positions, and we're not going to do that each time. We're going to let the program generate for himself 
the different loads. So I'm going to create a traffic lane. Let's see. If I create a traffic lane, I think it's best that I create it with a circular arc. So let's say, for example, here that it follows the bridge, like that. So, in fact, if you want to look also at, at different positions over the width, so for example, also here along almost at the edge, then actually you just create more traffic lines and you let them generate more load cases. And then you can look at uh, our mobile load that goes in the middle of the, of the bridge and also eccentric, so not in the middle of our bridge. Okay, so I made a traffic lane and now the lane loads land the traffic, okay. The manager is available now. So here you see the manager. I'm going to open the manager and this is the part where I can configure the load. So, first part first. Um, if you want to use the lane load manager, all you have to do is configure this part and then if you click on generate loads, it will create load cases and loads. Okay, so let's configure this part. The name is just, that's arbitrary, it's not that important, it's just for you to indicate it. The traffic load, that's something with the three points. The traffic load you can create yourself. If I say new, I can create the traffic load myself. Here uh, you see how the existing one was created. You do you, you can add point loads, line load, rectangular loads, or even turning joints. And you can add them at certain positions with certain, certain amount of loads, certain sizes, surfaces. You can configure everything there is about the load. And here you can access our system database. So let's just say copy all. Now this one is double, so I'm going to delete it. And here you can see different loads that are available. So for example, if I take, um, let's say this one, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to take this one. And I say, OK. And that will be my traffic load. It has to follow lane 1. So if there were multiple lanes which I created, then I would have more options here. Then it will create load cases that have a load group. Now this load group, you must place it to exclusive because if you're going to put all those load cases in a combination and you don't put the load group to exclusive and it's, it's a combination where the program has to think for himself, then it will look at the load group that all those load cases have in common. And if it's exclusive, that means that the mobile load at different positions won't be considered together. So the mobile load should either be at position 1 or at position 2, but cannot be at both positions at the same time. And it should be, uh, let's say, vehicle over 30. Okay. And this is the name that the load case will get, so if you want something else, then you can change it here. And then it's going to create the load on the traffic lane at each time 1 meter. So I believe I will have, I don't know, about 60 or something. Maybe it's a bit big, so I'll, maybe I'll just choose, let's say, 3 meters. I believe this end is over 60 meters. The validity, um, this validity will create um, um, a bigger or a smaller load at certain positions. So let's not touch that. And let's just generate loads. You will see here that it's generating something. It went pretty fast, so uh, maybe you haven't seen everything. So, in fact, if I click on generate loads, it will generate these load cases. Now, if you want to generate with, for example, another traffic load, new load cases, then you have to make um, an, a new load manager here. Otherwise, it will overrule the existing load cases. Now, these that have been created, I'll just have a look at them. I, I started here, so in the load case where I started, that's not changed. 
there is only new load cases and in those new load cases you can see that the traffic load has been generated and in fact if I take a top look well, it's not that clear actually you will see that uh, no, those are all little surface loads and it's sliding along the lane and of course you have free loads so only the part that is on the same surface as the plate will be generated and the other part will not because in reality it will also be carried by something else so here we see that with train loads you can generate different kinds of loads and load cases okay now I'm going to explain a bit about the bridge combinations that was the second part which I wanted to explain now bridge combinations we can create com combinations in C engineer according to Eurocode 0 now bridge combinations are according to amendment 2 and what it says is that well if you want to create bridge combinations then you have to take into account whether it's a road bridge a road yeah, a road bridge, a footbridge or a railway bridge and you have to take into account the combination factor and load coefficient for each type and also indicate whether it's a leading and accompanying load and different types of load cases don't always have to be combined, there are special rules what we do in the program is we're gonna combine the load cases the load cases, not the loads, so we're not gonna generate any loads with our bridge combinations, we're not going to look at the content when it's already been created. We're just going to combine load cases. And our national annex has been modified a bit to show you these different options. So we'll see that uh, for bridges you have different kinds of combination setups. And you will see here a part in green that is new and for each type so for each type you have the, so um, the combination setup the combination setup those are the special rules you have the C factors those are also different for each type of bridge and the load combination factors and in fact how you're gonna do it is you're gonna create um, load groups in those load groups you're gonna define what type of load that load group is and by by using that type it's gonna look at which C factor is necessary you can see here for road bridge you have these different options and also the corresponding C factors for foot bridge you have the same thing and yet again for railway bridge so it's actually just you have to indicate different types yourself and then it will look at C coefficients that are necessary. Then there is this, um, this coefficient, this gamma, and uh, it takes into account whether it's the leading or the accompanying loads. So if it's going to generate loads, it's going to consider all possibilities. And by using these different options, it will look at what kind of gamma it must use. So now we're under uh, load combination factors, this part here at the bottom. And then the last part, the, the combination setup, there you will see which rules must be applied. So we have different rules and you can say yes or no to each rule. So by default it should be all yes, but you can change it if you want. And then to indicate what type of bridge you ha have, you also have to indicate it not only in, in load groups, but also in the combinations and in the construction stages. So if I want to create a load group, I have to say it's a road bridge, then I can only use a road bridge, a variable load that is road bridge, in a road bridge combination and also in road bridge stages. So I will show you a bit about inputting those bridge combinations. So I'm going to go back to SIA Engineer and I'm going to start my second project. And in this project 
I already have something. There's already a model inside. And now I'm just going to look at the combinations. So to work with bridge combinations, in fact, you need to activate the functionality. You have the functionality for bridge combinations, bridge design. And so you have to activate bridge design. And then you also have to activate load combinations. And in fact, that those two together are bridge combinations. So the, here the load combination and concrete check extension that's um, a sub-part of bridge design. So once you have activated these, you can create different loads. So I'm going to go look here under load cases and combinations because it's this part that, that is uh, used as input to create your combinations. Now I'm going to look at the load groups because in fact it's the different load groups that create the, the combination or that are inputted in the combination. Now, as you can see, there are already different load groups made. So, in fact, we have made a load group for every type. You see, GR4 corresponds with the type GR4. So, we have already made different types. So, for example, if I make a new one, and I'm going to call it new, and let's say it's, uh, okay, also some some kind of crowd then you have to indicate that it's a road bridge just like the others they are indicated road bridge but these I cannot change anymore because they are already in a combination road bridge and the next part is that you have to indicate what kind of type it is once you have your load groups you can create a load case that has that load group. So here are the different um, load cases that are in the project. And let's make a new load case. Let's call him new again. Uh, this is uh, okay. This is load case new. And let's choose the a variable load and if I choose a variable load then I have to choose one of my load groups and I'm also going to choose the load group new which I have just created and these load groups are actually the basic for creating the combination so you're gonna you're gonna combine certain type of loads wind and etc and those type of loads that's all indicated by the load group and that's why the load case is just coupled to a load group, but you have to set in the load group which type of load it is. So it's all about the load groups. Then if I would want to make a combination, let's say I would want to make a new combination, and I say uh, a, a neurocode type, then here you have to say, for example, you see what is available here, it's not, not much, if I say, uh, what was it, road bridge, you see that there is many other choices that are available. So it filters a bit depending on the type of structure you choose. The same thing for your construction stages. In the construction stages, you also have to indicate that you're using road bridges. And then you can also only use those loads in that construction stage. And afterwards, after it's been created, it can create combinations itself. So in this project, it's, it, this has already been done. It's all been, been configured. You have, we have made construction stages with those load cases in it. And then in combinations, there have been, uh, those combinations have been created by our load case generator from the construction stages. Um, so it has created that automatically and for example here we have uh, let's let's take another one um, where is an interesting one here an accidental one maybe phase 3 seems to be an interesting one let's say phase 3 ULS okay 
you see there's a lot in this 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 face and now if I want to do look I can go and uh, have a look at for example if I say to if I say explode to do envelopes it can create a lot of envelopes now with those envelopes that it has created so in fact that's, that's this part with the envelopes that it has created it has in fact looked at the the different coefficients but it still can be exploded to linear so all those special rules have been applied and now it only still has to look at whether or not the relationship is exclusive or variable or something like that but all the coefficients have been applied and all the special rules have also been applied and now you can check the coefficients and you can have a look at whether it's okay or not and we only have to still explode to linear if you really want to see what comes out of it now if you want then you could also change the special rules in the national annex and that's that's something you also would would uh, be able to do and um, of what rules he has taken into account here that's something you can check also in uh, we have created a new option if I'm gonna go back to this this was phase 3 in ULS okay you have the show decomposed AN combinations and here it says what rules are taken to account it has these these fixed rules and then it says tell and then I've created combinations like this and like that and the combinations that, that follow from that rule are also shown in this part. So, in fact, here it says that, uh, in fact, all the rules are active. All the rules that I see here are active. And to change them, that would be equal to going to the National Annex, selecting Eurocode 2, uh, yes, Euro 211. Ah, oh, sorry, Euro code 0. My bad. My sorry. Euro code 0. And there you would be able to look at bridges. And under bridges, here I have my special rule, which I, I indicated uh, that they were activated for road bridges. Same thing for C factors for road bridges. I can address them here. And same thing for load combination factors yet again for road bridges very important so those are the possibilities you have when you're using bridge combinations in SIA now the next topic that I want to discuss is pre-stressing now pre-stressing can be divided into two major parts you have pre-stressing and post-tensioning or pre-tensioning and post-tensioning. Now the materials that are used are all, all put in our database. So we have a, a certain database and our database is based on the, uh, the code that is indicated here. And we also take into account relaxation parameters and there's we, we have tables defined but if you want then, then they can be changed but normally the dialog and, and the parameters they are code and time dependent and they can also be displayed but if you want then you can change it okay let's start with post tensioning uh, you can use internal and external tendons and there are different options to input the tendon geometry so there are three options to input it as you can see in the figure also three options and it will calculate then losses uh, like friction, anchorage sets, uh, consequence by sequential stressing etc. Now let's start with the input you have the direct input and let's just you, you input it manually so or you, you, you have to indicate in the, in the screen how it goes it can be done by clicking or by importing a drawing and following it or by parameterization so you can also um, indicate here the, um, 
the course of the tendon with parameters and thus using the parameters to more easily find the optimal design. You have different options for it. If you source geometry, that means you, you have uh, two tables like indicated here, one for the XZ plane and the other for the, the horizontal plane and the two together will give the 3D variation of your elements. It can be imported from a text file and can also be parameterized. Or there is a last option, and in fact there use a reference line and a source geometry. So it's a bit of a combination of both. You have to input your line, but, but you can use a certain source to indicate the heights, for example. Then there are also free tendons. Free tendons you have to look at, well, just how it is inputted here for certain type of bridges or it can even be under bridges or it can be visible external tendons but there are different tendons and those different tendons they, they can be free outside of the concrete external or internal mostly they are fix, fixed in deviators uh, as you can see here at the image below and so you have a, diff a certain stress after anchoring that you want to take into account and also the um, temperature load on those free temperature on the, those free loads the temperature load on the free tendons must also be taken into account because it's it's much more susceptible now to temperature loads so for that you also have uh, a separate kind of thermal loads and that's thermal on free tendon load so I will show you now, for example, if you want to use uh, uh, DWG and you want to use that to input your tendon, then let's see how you do it. So let's go to my third project. This one is empty again. I'm going to use my drawing. Sorry, I have to go to structure first because a tendon is inputted in the structure menu. I'm going to use Modeling Drawing and under Modeling Drawing I'm going to say Import DWG DXF and voila. Now I've placed it somewhere over here. Okay, it gives a message that it's 3D data and you put it in a 2D project so it will be planarized. Okay. Now, what do we need? Uh, we need, I believe, just the pre-stress part. Okay, those are small lines. That's not what we really want. So let's use the tool to connect curves. Start. I have to select everything. I have to do a run. So it has two polylines and then end. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna take this one. Yeah, maybe also small one. Oh no. Um, and then, okay, let's just say we want these two and import selected. So the size seems good. Okay, import selected. So this is just a line. Let's place it, for example, in the origin center of the line and next step is now now we have this our lines and we're gonna input our tendon here we have our tendon so we're using this direct input method you see that um, there is also other parameters that are important your material which contains also in fact your di diameter um, how your tendon, how your yeah your tendon is is uh, created. So with how many separate parts in it, and how much is it grouped, etc. Um, which is which is quite important. And uh, well, all these parameters, the type of pre-stressing, uh, how much you pre-stress, your your anchorage loss, all those things are pretty important because it will use it, these parameters in in the calculation. Okay, let's now just indicate OK. 
Um, in fact, I could select points from these lines. That's not what I want. I'm just going to say pick a line. And then I'm going to say follow this part. There you go. And next part is, I just have to confirm it. And now I have my tendon. So here. Okay, I had already selected it, which is good. Now I have my, my post-tension tendon. So you can see it was two parts, okay. And now it is over there. Um, if I want to show the 3D tendon, I have to go to my view parameters. And in my view parameters, let's see, it's a bit uh, little now. Construction structure tendons display okay. Um, style is the final okay. Color tendon drawing type, let's say 3D. I believe I've taken one with a diameter of 3 millimeters, it was a very small one. Might not have been the best choice. And now I just have to zoom in. And I'll be able to look at the tendon. Mm, okay, so let's just take another view in another direction. Here, axometry. It's a very small uh, tendon. But you can see that with the representation I can, well you can see it but in fact if I would have picked another another material then it would have been a big, bit bigger. As you can see. So, that way you can easily input a tendon by using those different uh, drawings that you get from, from other programs. Okay, now to continue but with the other part, the pre-tensioning. So, I've just explained a bit about post-tensioning. Now, if you're going to use pre-tensioning, well, you first have to indicate your, your borehole pattern so that you can in indicate your sectional pattern and thus on the beam you have your beam strand pattern. So it's quite logic because pre-stressed beams they are mostly uh, fabricated in situ, uh, no, uh, ex situ. Don't, so uh, you have to indicate well what kind of, of uh, beds you're using. And also the stressing bed must be indicated because th this can indicate, uh, this is used to calculate your different losses. How it goes? So first you have to indicate your borehole pattern. You can also make your own catalog of fabricated elements. In it you will indicate the, the pattern for a position of wires where you can put them. And the next part is you have to indicate which holes you put which wire. And it is also possible to use the bonding lengths to indicate what the length is where you do not want any, any pre-stressing or where it has uh, minimized, where it has become smaller. And it is also possible to use uh, transmission lengths that are calculated automatically or that you have inputted yourself. So the debonding lengths have no, uh, they have no uh, interaction, no bond with, with the concrete. And then you have the transmission length, which is here set determine transmission length by user, one meter, but you can also say automatic here in this part automatic and then to calculate the transmission length himself. So I've talked a bit about pre-tensioning and post-tensioning. Now to look at the difference you will see here that in, in the short term 
Well, there's difference in calculation, which is also a bit due to how you, you uh, input it, how you create your, your pre-tensioned or your post-tensioned elements. But in the long term, you're going to calculate the same thing. Relaxation, creep, shrinkage, and life loads. The short-term losses it can be considered. Uh, the fric you have the frictional loss, the anchor set, short-term re relaxation. The long-term losses will also be possible to, to ask for what amount of losses you have, have. And so you can look at the tendon stresses and you can see how they change. So I'll show you a bit about the internal forces that follow from pre-stressing. Now for this part I'm going to go back again to C Engineer and I'm going to open my next project. So in here I have a bridge with post-tensioned elements. And this one, this has already been calculated so I can go directly to the results. And in the results I can look at the uh, let's say the internal forces in the beam. Now the internal forces that I want to look at are now for the load case and I'm going to lo look at the load case free stress. And the load case free stress from I believe it's stage stage 3 for example They're gonna input, yeah, they're gonna create a certain amount of forces. Now, let's see, he says, restressing three stage. Okay. Now, let's just make the rest invisible and let's just check the moments. The moment which I get here, maybe I should uh, not show the tendons for a moment don't display them. There you go. What I get here are the internal forces, let's say, on the initial structure. These are the total resultants. So in fact, these, this is the moment, my, which you get from the pre-stress, just a part of the pre-stress, not the total one. It's just the part that has been added in, in that stage. And here you can see what the amount is, the amount of moments. Now for the moments you have different options. You can choose the total resultant, that's the total moment caused by the pre-stressing. You have the primary forces. The primary forces are the moment that is created by the pre-stress tendon that is placed eccentric. So in fact by these moments the, the beam would, would curve upwards. And then you have your secondary forces and in fact the secondary forces are created because you have a hyperstatic beam. So, in fact, the due to the pre-stress, it the beam wants to move upwards, but that that movement upwards is not allowed because you have a support here, and because it's not allowed, that is translated again to a moment. And uh, forces you can look the total resultants is in fact the sum of these two, sum of the primary and the secondary forces. And in fact the effect of the pre-stressing it is, it is calculated and it is, I can see here, shown in a load case. Now, in a bit I will continue further with this project. So I have, um, I want to explain first a bit about construction stages. So this was uh, one of uh, the last of the four last topic that I want to explain, the construction stages. And for the construction stages, you're going to in fact have to choose a different type of calculation. So if you're going to do linear construction stages, change the E-modulus or do a time-dependent one. Each has their advantages and disadvantages. So the linear one it can be calculated in general one in general X, Y, Z. The E modulus, then the change of E modulus in the concrete is modified in the time or you can do the time dependent and with that you take many of the time effects into account but you can do it only in, in XZ dimension for the moment.
So we're working on that, but for the moment it's XSET. An example of construction stages, so the effect that you have. So this example is just done with linear construction stages. You start with two columns. As you can see, the, the part that is added in the construction stage is indicated in green. In stage two, you will add this beam over here. In stage three, you will add another two beams. And later on, you're going to remove the columns, you're going to have temporary supports indicating green. And the last part, you're going to remove those two temporary supports. And in fact, you're going to keep one beam with two supports. Now, let's look at the internal forces. First, you start with those two columns. Then in stage two, you're going to add that beam. Okay, this part is normal. Next part, you're going to add two beams at the exterior sides. And what you can see here is that the beams are added to the deformed structure from the previous stage. So, construction stages, they calculate a structure, the structure is deformed, and on that deformed structure are the parts added that come into the next stage. So, for example, um, you will see that, that there is an effect of uh, adding or removing certain members um, and in, if you make certain clause and to do a linear superposition of those load cases but so the, the load history is taken into account so in fact if you look at the envelopes of the different moments then you will see this uh, this moment here of a simple uh, simple beam on two supports but also you have to take into account that there were different moments at different times. So the envelope respects the history that has been taken into account. And now, if you want to do a summary, then in fact it's going to look at the, the uh, installation and removal of certain entities. And you can also do the same thing for face cross sections. Now, to continue, that was just uh, linear normal construction stages. If we're going to do a time-dependent analysis, then you can also look at creep, shrinkage, and aging of concrete. So it takes into account the age that you place each member, and it's going to place that, that time on a global time axis. And that's what you can see here at the bottom. In fact, you're going to have a global time axis with all the different elements in it. And then the time dependent analysis, it's a numerical method. It's going to, in fact, it's going to calculate um, strains and creep at different times. And it's going to take into account that different elements already have had a certain amount of creep. And that it's going to continue in a different way than an element that did not have any creep. So we have several um, examples of it. So I have here a, a list of, of several examples of what you can do with construction stages. Uh, for example, if you're going to do something span by span with, with incremental or a cantilever construction or something, something temporary. And I have also have uh, one or two projects that explain these options. So now I'm going to go back to my project that I had because actually this project is created by... Um, a sliding formwork. Okay, I'm going to close this part and I'm going to look at my construction stages. Okay, I'm going to visualize yet again my uh, edges and I'm also going to visualize my tendons. So I have tendons display okay. What you can see here, we, we start in stage one. In stage one you are just going to cast the concrete and as you can see at the bottom there is a framework still there so actually that supports the, the everything. Later on, see in green, the, um, pre, yes, the pre-stressing elements are added. In the next stage we're going to cast a new part of the concrete and add more, uh, afterwards we're going to add more post-tensioned elements. And in the red you can see that the formwork has been removed. 
and so it goes on you're gonna add a new part you're gonna cast a part of the bridge and for another piece another part you're gonna add uh, in the next stage post tensioned elements and so it goes on and on as you can see until a certain time where we have in fact inputted the entire structure so nothing is in green but we're gonna look at different moments for the settlements so you see here at time 100 days 114 days 128 142 200 because we're gonna use a time dependent analysis and in the time dependent analysis we're gonna take into account the time so we make different stages just to look at different moments in the time and thus at the end you have this this bridge but the the elements that you have calculated are different from the ones that you would do without construction stages because it takes into, a time, into account the time history. For um, this bridge, so in fact it, it was really a bridge that was created in, in Czech as you can see here. That's the bridge that I've just shown you and it's in fact really really constructed uh, and as you can see here with a moving form work. Uh, another example if you have a cantilever construction you're also going to be able to take this into account with construction stages so you, you, part, you start with the central part you're gonna create uh, well, you're gonna take into account that those those pieces come step by step or step by step edit on each side till the moment that you connect them and then you're gonna expand your bridge later on with different elements you're gonna take all of that into account and it was yet another example of something that has been created in uh, I think Bratislava and something that is similar is uh, a temporary suspension so in fact this bridge has been created with a temporary suspension and this has also been, been inputted into C Engineer. So to show this I go back again to C Engineer and I have a temporary suspension. So in fact it also just starts with construction stages. First you start with the, the columns for the suspensions to uh, suspend the different elements and then you're gonna add different elements as you can see the next piece has been added then you're gonna add the, the uh, suspension the cable that suspends it you're add, adding the next block you're adding a cable next block cable and so on but different steps so take into account that each stage gets added to the deformed previous stage And if you do all these steps, then you get certainly different pro different re reactions than if you would just add it immediately and just calculate it with a linear calculation. And after part, the part gets removed, and then actually in the next stages you don't see anything changing, but you only see the the time changing, and that's because we're doing now calculation further in time to see how it will uh, change some more and this bit has this part is calculated to uh, stay stable like this for at least still half a year now the last thing with construction stages that you can do is you're gonna look at a 2d 1d upgrades that means you're gonna look at a bridge, complete bridge, set your forces on it, calculate the forces in the plate and the ribs under it, and in the next step you're gonna take one rib out of it. So as you can see here, you see the different moments in the plate, and in the next step we're gonna do the 2D 1D upgrade and take the forces in one piece and look at separate beam and actually the beam is also something with with faced parts 
this is in fact a phase cross section. You're first going to put the precast element and then you're going to put the bridge later on. So for example, it's been done for, for many bridges. Um, here's an example. It has four spans of 113 meters. Um, uh, four spans, yes. Yeah. And uh, each span, span was, was 27 meter. Um, just the same thing that you can perfectly do with C Engineer. Look at the, the how you have to calculate different beams. So look at the forces in the beam to calculate the amount of pre-stressing that is necessary. And of course, you would have to check different elements. So we, we have our concrete checks. We can look at uh, standard Eurocode 2 and we can also take into account differences from Eurocode 2.2. National annexes. So we have a subdivision of non pre stressed elements and pre stressed elements. And non pre stressed reinforcement and the non pre stressed, pre -stressed reinforcement in the pre stressed concrete. And we, we can next we, we do crack control, we check uh, decompression uh, if, it's, if it's necessary. We can check the capacity of the total section. It's a total reinforced cross-section. We can check the capacity in ULS, for example, and we can check the, um, the interface between the sections, between phase cross-section. So this would be if you have a precast element, and this part is the bridge that is placed on it later on, and then you can calculate the interface. As you see here, you have the resistance of the interface, and then here you have what it can take maximally, for example, like that. So, yeah, in this example, the maximal resistance would come from what the concrete could take. Um, we can also look at the stresses. So you have your concrete stresses, and you can check your limitation stresses. Same thing for pre-stressing, and uh, there are different factors that are implemented in the National Annex to change and to take it correctly into account. And the different an National Annexes that you can take into account is this, this, this entire list. I believe we are still adding, so uh, maybe there are some more by now. And of course, this is just, um, well, sort of, sort of speak, this is just the tip of the iceberg. In fact, you can do much more advanced analysis if necessary. You can do nonlinear construction stages if you want, or you can do a dynamic seismic analysis with spectra, sequential analysis, nonlinear steel check, pile design. Uh, you can parameter parameterize everything to make an optimal design. You can well, there's many other options that are still possible. So this is what actually I have explained you. Um, oh, I started with the variable traffic loads, the mobile loads, the train loads. Then I went over to the bridge combinations. I explained a bit about post-tensioning and pre-tensioning. And then I continued with the construction stages. So how you can take them into account, what possibilities you have, um, some examples. And I explained a bit the uh, dif different concrete checks that we have. And of course, you can take full advantage of these concrete checks to calculate your own pre-stressed elements. And of course, there are still other possibilities, but they are not in the scope of this presentation. So furthermore, I would like to thank you for your attention. Now, if there would be any more questions that you would not be able to ask us immediately, then you can always contact us. So the data are added here. Uh, you have we, we make a difference for technical questions or commercial questions because uh, sometimes there are different people and that's why we have different addresses and uh, so you, with these addresses you know where to find us. So furthermore I'd like to thank you for your attention. Have a nice day.